Today was a special day. I had my friend Bill Teft come over with his Hammond Multiplex Folding Typewriter. And we had a great time together, and he showed us the inner workings and basic overview of the typewriter. So this is February 2nd, 2021, and we're in New Mexico. And in the state of New Mexico, we still have a official lockdown going on. So since Bill and I don't live in the same household, we have opted for the sake of safety to wear masks over our face during the times that we're close to each other. So you'll be seeing us wearing masks and uh, you won't be able to hear our voices quite as well as you would otherwise. But I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks a lot to Bill for his generosity in coming over and sharing with us his Hammond Multiplex Folding Typewriter. Uh, this typewriter was meant to type virtually any language at any uh, type pressure. The pressure is, is constant throughout the keyboard. So some of the features, it's a three bank keyboard with caps and figures, which are the numbers on the top row. The typewriter has interchangeable type shuttles. So each type shuttle has a different font, different size, different character spacing even different languages. You could get virtually any alphabet in the world for this typewriter. The typewriter would actually, uh, could, you could actually get it ordered from the factory to go from right to left for those languages. The shuttles go on here. They get ro rotated to the middle. They need to be centered on these little prongs and dropped in and you're ready to go. The ribbons are standard half inch ribbons and you need to buy them and spool them yourself. So you gotta get your hands a little dirty. I'll type a little bit on here, but first we wanna show some of the things that you're gonna to have to get to use the Hammond typewriter. Ribbon, of course. This typewriter has a constant pressure. So when you type, and watch this, no matter how hard you type, this hammer is going to hit the anvil through this, this rubber impression strip through a little slot in what's called the ribbon guide, the ribbon, and the paper. So no matter how hard you press the key, it's gonna hit the paper at the same pressure all the time. The impression strip is a sim just a simple piece of rubber with a couple of grommets on each end, and they fit into these pins. So that does. that's the function of a of a platen that we would know in a normal in a regular typewriter. But there's really almost nothing normal about this machine. Because it was meant to be sold anywhere in the world, and in fact the slogan of the company was for all nations and tongues, they wanted to build a lightweight one that could be used anywhere in the world. The paper is inserted sort of backwards. You gotta roll it all the way in. It goes into this little basket here and we're using 32 pound laser paper so it does work with fairly stiff paper so here goes Oh, nice and dark imprint. Very mm -hmm. nice. Let's have a look at how this miraculous feat is accomplished. I've already loosened these plates. Using the right size screwdrivers is really important when you're taking apart some of these great old typewriters. They're so thin that only the thinnest screwdrivers will fit. So anyway, we're going to take this apart and see how this little devil works. So when you press a key, it raises a pin inside this spring, and at the same time, it pushes an arm that moves the shuttle. See how it moves that? Yeah, and that pin that's raised in the front is stopped by the rotating so arm. There's a little yeah. arm in there, and it hits and where the pin raises. That indexes it to a certain letter, right? Yeah. And then the anvil or the hammer in the back is released in its spring tension release, so it's always the same force, right? It's an amazing mechanism, Bill, because the force of typing is independent of how hard you hit the key. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The keyboard is split in, in half. 
half of the keyboard types on this side and the other half of the keyboard types from the letters on this side. So if I was to press one way out on the edge here, the Z key, you can see how it rotates this shuttle way over. Right. Okay. The ones in the middle, not so much. So the, the throw of the keys in the middle of the keyboard are shorter than the throw right. of the keys. So the, the ones on the outside of the keyboard push further down. Yeah. Same on this side. Yeah. So if I press on this side, you're going to see this shuttle rotate over to this ah, side. Ah, very cool. And same if, it, if it's in the middle, not so much. Ah, yes. Okay. Only the one in front of the paper moves. This one's kept in, in reserve. You can pull this up. In fact, I'll do that. This gets moved up. Move these around. So you, you can have two shuttles, two different typefaces on your typewriter at once. And so you can switch your typefaces around. So now this pin, this pin here will rotate the shuttle that's closest to the paper now. I see. Okay. That's an amazing mechanism. It really is. And it, show it from the back. This is the margin bell. Right. As I press down, it turns this, it raises the ribbon, yeah. and then it, it gets this ready to strike. Yeah. Amazing. And then when I release, this goes back. The ribbon drops. The ribbon drops and, and the all this shuttle returns. goes back. And of course the ribbon is turning also in on the spools. Right. The this, ribbon will yeah. advance. Right, right. Yeah, that, There's a ribbon knob. Yep, right there. This will wind it on yep. this way. You can pull it out and it will wind it this way. Very cool. Some other features. Line spacing selector here. This is the carriage release. Right. And it has a heavy spring. It's a heavy spring. Bring it back to the beginning of the line. So right now we're in a single line space. Now this is a three bank keyboard, meaning that the type is in three rows, right? You have lowercase, uppercase, and symbols. That's right. 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 So to print the lowercase g, just like that. To print the uppercase g, shift, right. like that. And then for figures, which are num also numbers, you'll see that the anvil goes way up. Very cool. This little button here, if you were typing a lot of numbers, you can press the, fig the figure button down, push that down. And it's like a shift lock for figures. And now it will hold. Now it will it, it will print all the numbers without having to shift. Very cool. And I was just amazed by how clean the type looks. The, the printing is very nice. Paper release is right there. Okay. Yeah. What I really like about this machine is the fact that the, uh, the imprint force is independent of your finger force. So it, it doesn't matter if you hit the keys hard or soft. It's a spring-loaded hammer that's hitting from behind, and it's just a wonderful concept. You can just sit here and lightly press the keys like that, and as long as you give it enough force to operate the mechanism and trip the escapement, it prints the same force all the time. It's so different. from any other kind of typewriter. So that is the vertical script type. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. The characters run together. It's really cool. Yeah. Showing you how the machine works. Uh, now we're ready to put it away for the for the night. And uh, how do you do that? Well, it says folding right here, so it it folds. First, you want to push this down. Then you want to push the space bar up. And then these two knobs over here on this side, you push them down, and this just folds right up. ready to go.
I enjoyed this today. This was such a blessing for me to see this machine close up. Bill brought it over uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and it was a lot uh, rougher condition, but he's done a lot of good work to it. And this thing works so well. It is so different than the standard type bar machine in the way the action is. And Everything is so interesting about it, and it's not just for a collector to put on a shelf, but it really is a pretty functional typewriter, and especially having the various type elements, they continue to make these same type elements for the Veritiper, which were used in the printing press business, and they were built up until maybe the late 70s, these type elements. So there's dozens of different kind of typefaces you can still get for these machines and still use them. So if I was in the market to collect this era, of machine, this would be the kind of machine I would be interested in. And I hope you guys are interested in it too. I'll have my friend Bill answer any questions that we might have about the Hamden Multiplex. Keep in mind that we didn't really cover anything about the history of the typewriter or the company, but we're going to try to do a follow-on video with a, just an interview style video with Bill just talking about the history of this machine and this company. In any event, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.